We open to see Voyager from the viewpoint of something floating in space. There's some incomprehensible bollocks at the bottom of the screen to tell us that it's probably alien. After being teleported aboard, Balana gives it a bit of a poke. We're told it's an unknown piece of alien tech and she wants the chance to get it repaired before the battery is drained. Despite Tuvok's caution, Janeway agrees and it's moved to engineering because, once again, the best place to play with unstable alien tech is next to the warp core. Following the trend of OSHA violations, we plug it straight into the ship to recharge it. With a little bit more power, it's able to have a look around, and finds a screen which reveals it to be that robot from the 1927 film Metropolis. After some more poking, during which the new Delta bot makes a garbled noise that might be an attempt at communication, Kim goes for a nap, leaving Balana to poke alone. It seems Delta bot is struggling to hold a charge because of the plasma in its power supply, Sometime later, she decides to take a break in the mess hall, where Neelix points out that maybe exhaustion isn't the best way to achieve success. Seeing the logic in this, or maybe just wanting to get away from Neelix, she goes for a nap, but not before taking another look at Delta Bot, which, and I feel this bears repeating, we have left unsupervised right next to the thing that can blow up the entire ship. Look, all I'm saying is you don't study termites in a wooden laboratory. Why not do this in a cargo bay? Then if it all goes tits up, you can just vent the lot into space. Or, better yet, fit all science vessels with a self-contained fuckabout module that can be ejected from the hull if the find-out part of that equation doesn't go to plan. But again, I digress. In bed, Balana seems to have an idea. We jog down to sick bay and run it all by the dock. He compares the problems with DeltaBot's power supply goop to contaminated blood and suggests a transfusion, which we can't do because we don't have the right goop, or an artificial replacement, which we might be able to science from warp plasma. Anyway, down to engineering we go. We stick some warp juice in Delta Bot and it wakes up, then thanks Balana for reactivating it, and explains that it was in a mining vessel when there was an explosion. In order to return it to its own kind, it gives us coordinates to one of its ships. While we're en route, we give Delta Bot a quick once-over. Explaining the repairs, Balana mentions that she had to do some fucking about with its power supply. DeltaBot seems a touch surprised by this, as such repairs can only be done by The Builders, its name for the race who created them. The Builders are all dead though, for reasons we don't go into, which makes me wonder if this is a Skynet situation, and DeltaBot asks Balana to make a new prototype power supply to create more DeltaBots, something they've been unable to do. A little later, we join Balana and Janeway discussing the request. Balana's in favour, arguing that all life forms have a right to procreation, but Janeway explains that this is a clear prime directive violation, because they didn't possess that capability to begin with, and I've got to tell you, I fucking love this scene. It's well written and excellently played by both Roxanne Dawson and Kate Mulgrew. It's also in direct contrast to the fuck it we're doing it anyway attitude that I had a little rant about in the last video, and is precisely the sort of moral debate I want to see in Trek. Each side has a valid viewpoint, each argument has strengths and weaknesses, and each course of action has far-reaching, unpredictable consequences. This all ties back into that request for nuance I've made many times before, while also highlighting the inevitability that, no matter what we do, we're never going to be the hero in everybody's eyes. But again, again, I digress. Janeway ultimately denies Balana's request to help DeltaBot, as we simply don't know enough about the situation to warrant interference. DeltaBot disagrees with the conclusion, but seems to take the rejection well enough. We reach the ship, and Balana's saying her goodbyes to DeltaBot. It seems to have other ideas, though, as it stuns her with a hand buzzer, then Emperor Palpatine's the other guy in the teleporter room, before scarpering with Balana in its arms. We try to give them a call, but nobody's responding, so we poop a little yellow at their shielding to try and make a hole to teleport Balana out. The DeltaBot's mates take a dim view of this and start pooping white balls in return, which seem to be rather more effective. After giving Voyager a right proper kicking, DeltaBot's mates relent in exchange for Balana, agreeing to make a prototype. We're ready to do some Frankensteining, but Balana wants to know why they've not been successful in their own attempts to make power supplies. DeltaBot says it doesn't know. They made perfect copies based on dead bots, and I'm guessing that's probably the reason why. If you make a copy of a dead heart, you end up with a dead heart. Anyway, DeltaBot's mate turns up and says they need to get a bloody move on, because those pesky Starfleet dickheads will have their ship fixed in about six days, and it thinks they'll try to make a rescue attempt when they're done. Oh, and if Balana fails, it's going to kill everyone. No pressure, though. Over on Voyager, everything's really fucked. 
It'll take days to get all of it working again, but Janeway doesn't have time for that, bollocks. Get the engines running again, and we'll worry about the rest once we've scarpered. After we grab Balana back, obviously. Speaking of which, she thinks she's figured out why the power supplies don't work. Whilst all other robot parts are interchangeable, each of the power supplies has a tiny variation, meaning they won't work in other units. Of course, this doesn't make any sense when you think about it, as she just said that every other part was interchangeable, meaning that they work with all power supplies, but we're not supposed to consider that, so shut up. Anyway, she's not sure how she's going to get around that, but we'll work on it. Back on Voyager, they're brainstorming a plan. Attacking was a shit idea, so we're not going to do that again. Likewise, teleporting through the shield still isn't an option. But maybe a shuttle can get inside them and teleport from there. Even better, Paris volunteers to do it, so we won't lose anyone important if it fails. Voyager's engines will be fixed in 12 hours, so that's how long we have to think of a diversion. While they figure that out, Balana's talking to DeltaBot as she works. There's some discussion over how artificial lifeforms are treated by the Federation, with Balana saying that the one sentient robot they have, Data, is treated the same as everybody else, and I have issues with that statement, but I've already digressed twice in this video, so we'll shelve it for now. It's also worth noting that DeltaBot neatly sidestepped a question about the Builders, reinforcing my suspicion about the whole Skynet thing. As we near getting Voyager's engines back online, Chakotay is updating Janeway. He also has an idea for the diversion, which involves projecting a fake ship. Turns out that might not be necessary though, as while he's explaining it, they detect a real one incoming. Speaking of incoming, DeltaBot becomes a parent. Balana's prototype has worked. No time for a baby shower though, as the new ship, that coincidentally has no life signs on and is almost identical, arrives and starts pooping at the first. Voyager pulls back to let them knock the shit out of each other, and is hailed by the new ship, which we discover is commanded by a knockoff C-3PO, who tells us to stay out of the way. Back on the first ship, Balana asks what's going on. It seems the second ship is under the control of robots made by a different flavour of builder, and with whom the first builders were at war. Thing is, the second lot of builders are extinct too, meaning the war is now just two sets of wind-up toys kicking the shit out of each other on behalf of masters who are already fucked. Guess I was wrong about the whole Skynet thing. Bugger all that though, because Paris is off to do some rescuing. Or not, as he bounces off the shield. Tuvok points him at a hole being opened by all the pooping going on, and off he goes to try that instead. As he does so, Balana is asking why the two robot factions are still fighting after both sets of builders are dead. DeltaBot responds that it's what they were made to do. In fact, the builder races called a truce and tried to stop the fighting by disabling the robots. Which is, of course, why the robots had to kill them all. Balana realises she's given DeltaBot the chance to make an infinite army of patricidal robo-wankers. To prevent that, she stabs the prototype, destroying it. DeltaBot gives her some Emperor Palpatine in return, and tells her to build another. She refuses, just as Paris teleports her away, and we scarp her while the two robo-ships carry on kicking the shit out of each other. Later, Janeway and Balana are having a chat about being forced to kill her robo-child, which isn't anywhere near as well written as the previous exchange, but they earned a lot of goodwill with that, so I'll let it go. Then we fly away. End of episode.